You've had Wendy's Nugs dipped in sauce, but have you had them covered in sauce? Wendy's new Saucy Nugs take the crispy and spicy nugs you love and turn them up to 11. Choose between flavors like buffalo or honey barbecue, garlic parm, or if you're a real heat seeker out there, you can try spicy ghost pepper only on Wendy's signature spicy nugs. Listen, I'm going to dare you to do it. I dare you. That's seven delicious ways to try the nugs that you already love. Pick a flavor, grab some extra napkins, and then grab a few more napkins and prepare to nug like you've never nugged before. For a whole new way to nug, it's got to be Wendy's at participating U.S. Wendy's. What is up, Cal fans? We are back with another episode. California Golden Bearcast, proud partner of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. We are here 3-0, believe it or not. My name's Andy. Alongside me is Rob. We had quite the Saturday. What a throwback in time. Mm-hmm. I felt like I, I, I like Benjamin Button, except... You know, I went the wrong way. I, I, went, I went back 10 years in my life. I was back to being 27, maybe even younger than that, to be honest. Not physically, though, just uh, just like oh, mentally, no. emotionally for like a few hours. Lord knows it wasn't physically, but <laughs> mentally I was there. Rallies, uh, rallies. Yeah. I never know how to say that the right way. Yeah. Then we went to the pregame tailgate, which yep. is massive. It was bonkers this week. Right for California, tailgate, yeah, blew up. <laughs> it exploded. I don't know what happened. Blew up. Yeah, that was crazy. And then there was just you know crawfish boil. Shout out to Nick, showing me how to eat a crawfish. There you go. I could not get over how little of that animal we eat. <laughs> yeah, there's you, you don't eat a lot of it. Yeah, it, I was like, we merc these things for this just a bite yeah a much. tiny little morsel but yeah i mean i was rolling with the uh the ato crew as we once were you used to be 60 strong now we're you know down to about <laughs> six but rolling uh rolling deep and I had the best time vibes were immaculate and malort was consumed unfortunately well, fortunately, it, it resulted in the win, so... Well, here's the thing. Avi was like, yo, Andy, you got to take at least three if we're going to cover the spread. I was like, <laughs> I can't give you three. I was like, what does two get me? He's like, two gets you like a 10-point win. I was like, okay. What about one? He's like, yeah, you don't want to do one. I was like, all right, I guess I'll do two. He's like, you sure? You don't want Cal to cover? I was like, no, I don't. Because that stuff tastes like old spoiled plants i don't i don't i don't know how to describe it it's like it's like it tastes like dirt but like bad dirt some dirt that was like near a facility that had a nuclear leak like it's it's just wild how like that's become like uh you know the the unofficial drink of the right for california tailgate and it's mm. like at this point like people were bringing well lord like as they're you know like we say oh. like hey bring some beers like people were bringing malort i so thought it was that there was only one bottle and then i saw another one get rolled out yeah and yeah i mean it was so nam actually tasked me to see if we can get like a get something from malort <laughs> like jepson's so i sent them an email this week like with pictures from the tailgate and like you know the record, the current record of like it being undefeated in the state of California when we drink it before a game. Um, and I just gave them the whole spiel of this is you, you know, someone posted on Reddit too, on um, I believe the Chicago Bears subreddit was like, hey, different bears, but here in California, like we're drinking Malort here, <laughs> you know, like we've we've uh, adopted it as our like own beverage here, like it. it 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 took off, so I sent them an email. It's like, hey, if we can get like a, you know, if we can get some marketing thing type of setup, or maybe you can send us like a care package or something like that, like we would, we'd have fun with it. 
Um, they haven't responded yet, but we'll see. But yeah, it's uh, it be- it became something else on Saturday for sure. The tailgate, it just became something else. It's crazy. Uh, was it seventy five people at least? I'd say. I mean, probably when you were there, but I'd I'd say it was over a hundred in terms of people who like came and went. There, I mean, I I haven't done a beer bong in. <laughs> Maybe since I've graduated. <laughs> I can't believe there was a beer bong there. Were you the only one out of the group that did it? My Every single person in our group did it. <laughs> the best part was our former president. I won't shout him out by name because I don't think he'd appreciate it. But our former president, who uh, can handle his alcohol, could not do it. Could not do it. But I remember distinctly opening it up and... Jared was filming and I was like, dude, if you zoom in on my eyes, <laughs> my eyes go from normal to extremely bulged. <laughs> as soon as that thing starts going, <laughs> it's like they were popping out of my head. I was like, oh my God, I forgot how intense this is. <laughs> it just keeps flowing. It just keeps flowing and there's nothing you can do to stop it. But hey, at least there was a beer beer bong and we didn't throw Malort in there. Dude, true that. And I'm zero <laughs> surprised that I have some sort of viral sickness. I, I, I earned that. Yeah. I earned that in a major way. Dude, but it was, I mean, what a Saturday. Like, you know, I think you and I agree, like kickoff times, I think four o'clock is like the most ideal kickoff because it gives you enough time to tailgate and it gives you like the day game vibes. But then the second half gives you like the the the, the theater of an evening game. But like every once in a while, like, you know, an early, early season 730 kick, like the vibes just hit differently, too. I think it's just you have so much time to tailgate, so much time to enjoy the festivities. And then the game kicks like I don't want this often because it got cold. I mean, you texted me. You were like, I'm, I'm freezing. Uh, and it was pretty dang cold around the stadium. It just happened. That we have a cold wave in the Bay Area this week. But like, man, just a perfect, perfect, like second home game of the season, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, not a perfect first half. No, I'll I'll say that. No. But I think, I you know, the seven thirty, I I view it a little bit differently now as a parent. I, I think that like, well, one, I mean, part of me is like, Eva would have been there, and would I have been doing beer bongs in front of my one and a half year old daughter? Probably not. So <laughs> I at least got to like be a little let loose a little bit more because of the fact that it was a late game. But sure. the flip side is I did really feel like it knocked out the family being yeah. able to go, which yeah. is a big bummer because the whole reason why I got season tickets is so that I could bring Eva and die to the games. And unfortunately they couldn't come. So I, I see it both ways, both ways, but it was so cold, dude. And that was yeah. miserable. So I don't, I don't know what's going on with my season tickets. Uh, I am almost scared to say this on the pod. Like they're great seats. I absolutely love the seats and they're exactly where, we had set set them to be, but there's a placard on my row that says Cal football recruits only. And <laughs> I think somebody messed up because there was a point in time where they were going to have to move my seats because I was in a recruiting row that they wanted for recruits. And then I was told that it went back and that my seats were fine and that my seats were not in that. So I was sitting. Oh, and by the way, two of the guys that you were hanging out with Franco friend yeah. of the pod i'm not even gonna mention ward because i'm not sure if he's he's a friend of the pod or an enemy of the pod based on not not anymore after after those shenanigans walking I, up the stadium yeah okay thank you thank goodness born you got canceled good job buddy <laughs> <laughs> uh franco didn't make it to the game he decided that he was gonna go stay at our house i'm not gonna say anything more beyond that he's like i'm gonna stay at the fraternity house I was like okay great so there goes my ticket didn't get used after all of that and then the group that i was with got tickets that were in the super nice area. So I couldn't go join them. And so I was just sitting there by myself in an empty row. Oh my gosh. Watching the game, watching that first half with 13, 13 at least. I mean, if not more San Diego state penalties and then two San Diego state fans behind me that were actually quite reasonable because every single time there was a penalty, there's like, yeah, that was obvious. Yeah. Yeah. That was obvious. Oh yeah. Look, yeah. that was obvious. But you could also tell they're just like, they, they had zero faith in their team, but it was close. And you, you know it's bad when they're talking shit on their own team, but you're still in a one-score game. because It you're makes like, you feel bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes you feel all type of bad because you're like, 
they know their team sucks. <laughs> they are <laughs> audibly saying that this team sucks. And then on top of it, it's a 7-3 game. And oh, by the way, if there wasn't the holding call on that uh, interception or, yeah, interception, you know, it would have been San Diego State lead. So yeah, that's a touchdown, yep. it was a pretty miserable experience other than, speaking of sponsors, Starbird is so good. That? You don't think so? You don't think I, so? No, oh I think my it's a good, gosh. No, I think it's a good chicken sandwich. No, not chicken sandwich. Not at all. Chicken strips and fries, my oh. friend, with the starboard <laughs> sauce. And then you break that chicken up. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. I, I, I credit Cal for turning me on to starboard. And now I know it's like in SFO, in yeah, Terminal it 2. Yep. It's in Foster City on the way home from the airport. I know starboard locations because of Cal football. <laughs> that place is so good. And I'm, I got my routine dialed in. I go in. I hit it early before the line gets there. And I'm just, you know, sitting there in a row by myself with like football recruits passing me left and right. And I'm just sitting there by myself watching the game. I was like, oh, this is you interesting. Turn, you turned into an old blue overnight. So fast. I was like, <laughs> I was swear I was with like 75 people 60 minutes ago. And then within that point in time, I was with nobody. And I was like, you know what? I'm freezing. I have no sweatshirt. I just had an undershirt in my jersey. That's all I was wearing. I was like. This is one of those times Nam's going to kill me. But I was like, I could go to QQ, join up with Nam. I could go to, I think, R to join up with Nick. I was looking for you on the field, but obviously I can't get down there. So I made the decision. I was like, I think we're going to win this game. No matter what, it's going to feel better if I am in bed, like with a blanket over me than in the stadium. <laughs> so I hopped out, got myself on a scooter and like, literally got home and watched the most of the rest of the third and then uh fourth quarter from the comfort of a nice warm bed wow what a i didn't journey. plan on saying that out loud no. actually <laughs> what a journey what a journey you had on saturday you could have filmed you, it's it's like ferris bueller's day off like you could have filmed an entire movie out of that just for you I agree. There was a point where I was DJing on the roof for a group of five people <laughs> that were all maybe 17 years younger than I was. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> You'd love to see it. You'd love to see it. <laughs> oh, for Miami, I'll bring my best. Although, Diana's coming with me for that one, so that's going to be even more fun. Is, all right. is the kid coming to Miami too, or is it just I? I think we're just we're going to get a parent's day off. It's my hope. Okay, okay. My hope. All right. Well, time to hit the tailgate again then. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Yes, um, my lord may or may or may, may not be consumed. <laughs> it, well, one hundred percent will be consumed because I think I think the Miami game means we're going for win number ten with Malort at the tailgate, which is a milestone. Sheesh. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I want fine. I want the instant reaction because I think this one will actually be be interesting, like the instant reaction overreaction. And I'm gonna borrow a question that Corey asked, uh, who is a friend of the pod. And he uh, went, texted me afterwards and said, hey, I remember on the previous podcast that you had said that if Cal had a win that was 31 to 10, you could see a world in which they were top 25. Mm -hmm. But given how the game played out, did you think that this was convincing enough to get them into the top 25? I have my answer, and he knows my answer, but I do want to hear your take on mm. that. I see the top 25 thing is weird because I think the game, honestly, for me, it was less about how the game went and more about what time the game ended. I think it was the game ended way too late. It was like 10 30 or 11 by the time the game was over. So most of those voters are like in bed. <laughs> like they're not, they're checking, they're checking like the score, maybe except for like John Wilner, right? Who's like on the West Coast, but like. Most of those writers are on the East Coast. They're probably asleep. They're checking the the box score for all these games the morning of before they have to submit their votes. So for me, it was less about that. Um, it was, I think, more about how we got the win, which is what mattered the most. The, the second thing is, how did our opponents up to that point play? Like, how did UC Davis play? How did Auburn play? Um, I don't know about UC Davis. I know that Auburn won, but Auburn, like, barely scraped by, too. And, you know, and they're changing a quarterback and, and all of that sort. So 
I was hoping maybe we could sneak into the top 25, but also like the looming after seeing Florida state lose to Memphis the morning of our game. Like I was like, all right, I'm in the point of let's not go into Florida state ranked as a three and O team and them unranked as an O and three team. Like that's Mm. the trap feeling for me, which is what I, what I didn't want. And thankfully we are not ranked. Well, I think you bring up a good point about sort of the half. And I do remember, I, I believe it was Southern Mississippi versus Cal in 2004. And that game with J.J. Arrington, and mm-hmm. there was a play where I think they called a hold. He scored a touchdown. Would have been like 30-plus to 16. Instead, everybody saw 26-16, right? And then we didn't get the Rose Bowl. So that one uh, hits close to home in regards to people staying up late and the impact that that can have. Um, I think it's very real. Mm-hmm. I think that if the game... At first, I was like, well, I don't know. It was pretty convincing in the second half. But, like, San Diego State looked so bad, so mm-hmm. bad in the first half that I found myself sort of second-guessing my initial reaction. My initial reaction was like, yeah, it'll be fine. Like, I think we played well enough to deserve a top 25 ranking um, because of the second half. But I, I think that the point that was made to me was, like, if you had flipped it, then you probably do get that. And I think you, you're you basically saying the same thing. It's like you probably had 10, 30, so the first 30 minutes of that game to, for, to prove people and say, hey, like we're legit. And I think we looked okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, but that's been the trend of these this Cal team this year, right? It's like we have slow starts. Yeah. Defensively and offensively, it's just we have slow first quarters and then – into the second half, we make adjustments and the team kind of explodes. So maybe the defense kind of explodes, maybe going into the second quarter. But for the most part, the team is def- this team is right now looking like more of a second half team than a first half team after some adjustments at halftime. So that kind of is lead. That's that's the trend I see so far through three games. Yep, I agree with that. Not, I mean uh, Auburn defensively. Davis defensively, I always say second half for sure. And then this game a little bit different because San Diego State was just, I think, because of the backup QB, they were just so bad. Yeah. And and they just never really had a chance. Yeah. I mean, the thing for us too is like we lost Craig Woodson for the game in like the what, the first quarter, like crazy. The first, the first play or like the first, second play of the game. Um, and then we lose him. And then we also didn't have Marcus Harris. Yep. who's arguably our second best corner for the first half of this game as well. And then he gets the interception in the second half when he does play. So like, we just weren't at full, we just weren't at full strength. We're just like throwing guys on there at this point, um, just because guys are either hurt or we're getting targeting two guys in two consecutive games, getting ejected for targeting calls. I, no one knows what targeting is. Not anymore. No, nope. They've like, it's just, it's, yeah, we said it before, jokingly, they jump the shark, it's jump the shark. No one knows what it is. No one knows what it isn't. It's a stupid rule. It's it's a it's it's a stupid rule in the sense of like it's well intentioned. Yeah. But if you don't have a strong definition for what it is and what it isn't, then it doesn't make any sense. And it's not helping anybody because yeah. then it's just gonna leave players confused and they're not gonna know what to do. So that is just like it's so dumb. It's like the mask on, mask off stuff. Just, just make it. Just, what is? What is it? Is it helmet to helmet? If it's helmet to helmet, fine. That's targeting. Make it targeting. Is it? You know, is it leading with the crown of your helmet? Is it tucking your head and going forward? Like, just, just define it and then rule <laughs> accordingly. It, I don't, I don't understand. But the way it's working now, it's completely ridiculous. But yeah, I think my like. So I think that's my. Reaction. It's not so much a huge overreaction. It's great to be three and zero, first time since nineteen. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I, I think to be a second half team is a breath of fresh air in that sense as well. Like we wanted to understand what Blesh would be doing at halftime and and where like true adjustments would be made. I feel like he's done quite well there. Mm-hmm. And you can continue to make the argument that this team has never been truly at full strength. Yeah. But there was nothing convincing about that win in 
uh, in the first half of that game. And the second half, it, cer- it certainly helped, but I- I'm very curious to see what happens on Saturday. And we'll talk about that later. But I'm just yeah. like, I'm trying to lead with, I think eight and four still feels real good for me. Yeah. And again, that's crazy that people will listen to that and be like, you're insane. <laughs> I don't know. I feel most, is, most Cal fans are coming around on it. I think there's a lot of non-Cal fans that aren't coming around on it, though. What do you mean? Like, I think most Cal fans are looking at the schedule now and being like, yeah, 8-4 seems doable. And and at this point, we're already three wins into eight wins. Like, I can I can conceivably see five more yeah. there. And it's not a stretch to see five more there with how the ACC has been going so far this season. Yeah. I mean, or- Oregon State getting obliterated helps. Yeah. You see that game, we put that as a trap game. You're like, okay, maybe not. Then, you know, F- Florida State. Uh, yeah, Who knows? Can't, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. Then, I mean, Miami, obviously a big one. NC State's a big one. Syracuse is looking like a tougher game now than it was four weeks ago. Yeah. So. But, yeah, I mean, I think my instant reaction and overreaction would just is like, look, I, this early on in the season when we're not at full strength, the questions that we needed answered for me, we've had, we've had answered like, who is our quarterback? Is he a good enough quarterback for, to lead an offense? I think we've got the answer to that with Mendoza. Like, are we making adjustments at halftime? Can we, can we take the hits in terms of either injuries or suspensions or whatever it may be? Do we, cause it felt like we've built out that depth. Do we see the fruits of that the, that building out of that roster? I feel like we have. So, despite that, like we're still winning, or I guess with that we're still winning, and we're winning the two games that we were supposed to win with double digit margins. We won in double digit margins. The one game we were a third a double digit underdog, we won by single digits. So, like, just from a narrative standpoint, as as the season has progressed so far like we're i think we're either on schedule or ahead of schedule it's just if you look at the nitty-gritty of each game and how it's played out you you know maybe there's room for concern there but overall like as long as we're winning like the margin for error has definitely increased over some of the other wilcox years at least in my opinion oh yeah oh of course i mean so much of that has to do with the pac-12 schedule going away yeah but I mean, there's a there's a very realistic possibility that Cal goes from three and zero to three and two. We have to be ready for that roller coaster. It's not going to be fun, but it's that's it's very realistic. We're still we still weren't when the line came out. It was still favoring Florida State, and then I think it moved a little bit more towards toss up. But I think it's down to one now, and I'm sure it's it's going to be it's going to be a half point by kickoff. It was like four and a half. Yeah, it started off. It yeah. started off like at at four and a half. Yeah. So. I, I think that overall, if you go three and one, three and two, four and two, you know, something like that, I, I think I'm with you. But like with the Pac 12, as we said last week, it was like you had to be four and oh, you had to be three and one, you yeah. couldn't be two and two. Yeah. So you're just going to go into this gauntlet of teams and have the toughest time. But it, it really does feel like the biggest thing for us that I'm curious about is one going to be, a, as I said before, I know everyone says it's not a thing, but I'm curious what it's like. Second cross country trip, right? Very curious what that's going to do. Uh, and if there's going to be any, any rest there. And then coming back and having a really big game against Miami. And what does that back to back look like? But well, to be fair, you have a week in between those two games. Oh yeah. The bye week. Well, yeah. I mean, I know, but unfortunately we haven't been that good coming out of bye week yeah. in the Wilcox era. It's True. not True. been a strength of ours. I'm just saying it alleviates the whole like concern of coming back from an away game. And then five days later, yeah, six days later, they're playing another top 10 team at home. Yeah. Good point. So, but I mean, I don't know if you saw, but Wilcox gave a good answer about like the travel stuff. I think, was it last week or this week? when they asked him about it and you know, it was a sarcastic answer of like, you know, like they have these things that go really fast. They're called airplanes. So 
<laughs> so you're just exhausted. It's exhausted probably, by the yeah. question. Yeah. How many times do you have to answer that? Is, is travel going to be an issue? Is travel going to be an issue? I don't know. All the guys I've talked to, I've said this answer before, but they're just like, yeah, it's a plane. We get on it. We go. We play a game. We come back. Like, it's not, you know, they're not riding on a Greyhound bus from here to to Auburn or Tallahassee, Florida. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we shall <laughs> see. We'll talk about the Florida State game a little bit more later. But for now, what are we moving on to, Andy? Light it. There's only one place you can hear a three-time national championship winning head coach. A Heisman Trophy winning running back and national champion. And someone to keep everything on the tracks. Every week, Coach Urban Meyer, running back Mark Ingram, and me, Rob Stone, get into what matters most to you. We take you inside the biggest moments in college football. While having some fun bringing you guests from all over sports and entertainment. Watch Triple Option on YouTube or listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. The journey to a smoke-free future can be a long and winding road. But if you're ready for a change, consider taking Zinn for a spin. Zinn Nicotine Pouches offer a fresh way to discover your nicotine satisfaction. Anywhere, anytime. No smoke, no spit, and no lingering odor. Get in gear with the Zen 10 Challenge and enjoy 10 smoke-free, spit-free days for just $5.95. Order online and start your new journey today. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Well, all right, let's get into the game a little bit then. San Diego State, Cal, Cal win 31-10. Um, I think some of the more important stats, first downs, Cal 21 to San Diego State 16. Net rushing 275 to San Diego State's 110 with an average of six and a half per carry for Cal and 30 uh, and 3.1 for San Diego State. Uh, passing yards, the Bears with 198, San Diego State with 166. Uh, two interceptions on 14 of 30 passing for San Diego State. One interception, 21 of 29 for for Mendoza. Of course, another really really efficient day passing the ball. Uh, of course, the lead, the more and Andy's favorite. Javian Thomas, 169 yards on 17 carries for an average of 9.9 yards per carry. Sadly, no touchdown. I thought he was going to get it on that long run, but ultimately got caught up too. Um, pass, catching wise, Nizia Hunter, of course, leading the way again. Four catches, 52 yards, a touchdown. That's four touchdowns for Nizia Hunter in three games this season. And then on defense, uh, just a couple of more important sat, uh, stats. Our inside linebackers, this this Wilcox defense, all the Wilcox defenses, of course, are built with the inside linebacker out. So, Cade Olave, 11 total tackles. Teddy Buchanan, 11 total tackles. Cade had a tackle for loss, a breakup, and a QB hurry. Uh, Teddy had a half a sack and half a tackle for loss. And then Xavier Carlton also had a day with uh, two and a half sacks, two and a half tackles for loss. Just incredible, incredible day. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for the stats. What do we want to talk about, Andy? I, I, want, I kind of want to talk about the run game. Mm-hmm. What would you do next week? In terms of... Let's say Jaden 75%. Do you play Jaden? Well, or do you I, try well, to go to Florida State without him? Wilcox said he's probable today, which um, I'm going to assume he's playing. I, I saw him so so this is the things I get being on the sidelines, right? Like he ran out with the team, like with helmet, full pads and everything. First half, I think he sat he's was on the sidelines with his uh shell and helmet off wearing a hoodie, but he had his his pant pads were still on. So for me, like if I'm reading the tea leaves, it felt like a breaking case of emergency type of situation. If the run game wasn't going, then he could go. Because he also wasn't wearing that brace on his leg that he under the pads that he wore against uh, at Auburn. Hmm. So that's no longer there. And then the second half after halftime comes back out, he's just, everything's off. So, cause I think, you know, it, it kind of felt like the game was in hand. Um, so they didn't really need him to play. So if that was the, if, if the intent of going into this game was, we're not going to play Jade. So he gets his rest in this game, unless absolutely necessary. Best case scenario did play out then because he didn't he didn't play at all. He got warm ups in, and it was, that's exactly uh, what was needed. I think at Florida State, if he's able to go, and he's even close to to a hundred percent, like 
you know, like the whole coaches thing about players being injured, right? Like as soon as football season starts, everyone's carrying some sort of injury all season. I don't think you're, you're ever going to get someone back up to a hundred percent. Yeah. But if you're, if you get a guy up to maybe 80, 85% and he's able to go, he's too talented not to play him in a game like this. Like if you can use him to come out and punch someone in the mouth, like, you know, he comes out there first play, you know, first drive of the game. He like runs it for 25 yards and then, you know, maybe a touchdown at the end of the drive. Like that's just, that's a shell shock moment that you can put on Florida state. And so, and that immediately puts pressure on their defense to kind of zone in on, on Jaden whenever he's on the field. Mm, so, I mean, I would, I, I think it's, it's too big of a moment. It's your first ACC game. Like, I think you need to. Yeah, I can't decide. I, I mean, Jabian's giving you a, a really good option. Yeah. That, and he's got he's got really good burst, good vision. The reason he's jet for you know yeah this is nickname so not not great in the pass blocking arena. Still a sophomore, he's growing. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a real question for me because Jaden really didn't do anything against Auburn. Yeah, anything. So I I don't I don't know. But if if you're saying I mean, Auburn good insight. You saying the brace is off? I yeah. think. I mean, I think Auburn. That. It felt like he was just in there as a decoy yeah. for most of the game. They didn't really try and 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 force the issue with him. So, but yeah, as you said, Jav, like we can talk about Javian and and how how well he played in this game. Like, just he exploded. I honestly was shocked. Like, I think it was like midway through the third quarter. Where he gets a run and then the stadium announcer is like JV and Thomas with another like, you know, however many yards. Um, and then he like says for his, you know, twelfth carry, it's like 130 yards or something like that. Like he, that's that's what this I was like, what? Yeah. He's like, he has over a hundred yards? Like yeah. I, it just it didn't register to me that he was he was had that many yards carrying into the game. Um what's crazy, I think for me, and we the run game in particular, right? Jamal Wiley, who got in at the very end of the game, like the true freshman, was the only per- was the only player outside of Mendoza getting sacked that got negative yards. So, yeah, Javian Thomas zero lost yards. Kadarius Tony zero lost yards. Um, Josiah Martin zero lost yards. You know that was the 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 reverse. Byron Cardwell zero lost yards. And he I mean he only got that one touch on that fourth down halfback dive that didn't work but like not having losses yeah but not having losses in the run game i think i think that's an important stat to have because you know we've been talking about the run game and blocking and so on and if you're getting no tackles for loss then those guys are only eating up yards every time they touch the ball and like from my view on the field too like it was the same thing at auburn the second half hit and i it's just the running lanes looked bigger since I'm I'm level with the field, right? So I can see when gaps are opening up. The the gaps are being made for guys to run through. Like it's just there's a little bit of I don't know if it's luck or or skill, but you know, a couple of shoelace tackles like just trip up guys and you don't get the 15, 20 yard run, but instead you end up with like a five or six. But the running lanes are being created. Like I don't think there's an issue with the scheme and the execution from the offensive line, particularly in the run game. Pass protection yeah. is a different issue, but 